zombie survival horror game? How could I not love this? Oh, oh god, it's Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark is a survival horror, sometimes first person, sometimes third person adventure game released in late 2008. The PlayStation 2 and Wii ports were handled by Hydrovision Entertainment, who I have never heard of before. The Alone in the Dark series started off in the early 90s and paved the way for future survival horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. It had a few sequels, but in 2008, a tech demo was released that blew my mind. I was incredibly excited and intrigued with the displayed system of first-person item combination mixed with combat. You could create Molotovs, flamethrowers, zombie deterrent, alternate light sources. Everything they were showing me had me gasping and giggling in elation. Then more footage surfaced, showing freeform environment interactivity and dynamic fire. I was awaiting the release date with bated breath, along with the rest of the gaming community. Then Alone in the Dark dropped and instantly received terrible reviews. I held off and as quickly as Alone in the Dark entered my life, it dropped off the face of the planet. I picked it up for this review and I can now understand why. First of all, I chose the wrong platform. The 360, PC, and PlayStation 3 versions received more free roaming and a less linear level design than their PlayStation 2 and Wii counterparts. I also don't know how buggy the other versions were, but I found myself getting tripped up on invisible geometry or being unable to turn my character around, which, as you all can understand, is incredibly frustrating. Hello? You there? Your character has amnesia, so I'll hold off on plot breakdown for fear of any spoilers. A lot of crazy shit is going on around you and you blow past random NPCs in the name of your own survival. Also, there are zombies. The game has variety with light exploration, learning what you can bash into pieces, scaling giant walls, driving sequences, and flat out combat, but it doesn't feel as cohesive as it could and that kills the point in the variety. Puzzle solving is practically null and void in favor of picking up the nearest big item and either lighting it ablaze or breaking down a door with it. Coming back to this title, I started off quite skeptical. The guy on the cover looks a lot like Keanu Reeves, and from what I can tell in-game, he mostly acts like him too. I was a few years older and the item combination wasn't nearly as intriguing as it had originally been. The pacing of the game was also incredibly odd. There are times where survival requires patience. Everything was very scripted, so the times of restraint were intended, but felt ill-placed. Also at times, the game chugs and feels so incredibly slow. I wanted to know what the run button was, as I felt Keanu just shuffled along like another zombie. There were times I pressed a button or tried to swing a sledgehammer and the controls just didn't respond. It's frustrating as the only time they seem to not work is in an urgent situation. The camera is also awfully placed, and yes, you can flip on over to first person view at almost all points in the game, but again, the variety of display is killed with poor execution. Oh god, so I get that this title is called Alone in the Dark, but I could not for the life of me adjust the brightness settings in game, and that drove me crazy. There's nothing worse than not being able to see what's attacking you or where you should go next, or oops, that was a ledge I just fell off of and died. The title is split up into chapters, which are all instantly available for play. I'm assuming this was to create a more episodic adventure than a straight playthrough, but the quickness that these chapters came and went with was a little disjointed. I guess if you get frustrated at certain sections, you can just skip that chapter and have the game recap what's occurred up to that point. I personally had problems with any of the chase sequences, as it felt like if I happened to run over a tiny pebble, my car would spin out and I would instantly die. It also felt incredibly obvious that there was one way and one way only to complete most car scenes, and deviating from that set path instantly warranted death. Alone in the Dark has its moments where an amazing game shines through all of the porting noise. The item combination is really interesting and I think that the inventory system is quite creative. Also, the in-game cinematics felt fluid and very well put together. So, I'm recommending that you do play this title, but on a newer gen system. Right now, it's so not in demand that you can find a version ultra cheap. It has some interesting game elements and the storyline is decent, and it's something to play just so you can say you have. Are you done calling? Okay now, let's head out. Gotta be real careful here.